Hi, this is Diane Dietrich of C3D, and today we're going to talk about some tile editing tips, and in the meantime, we're going to learn how to use uh, the Intersect with Model Tools, and some more thing about component sizes, and some more stuff about materials. Great. So let's gonna, um, go to the 3D Warehouse, because you can work along. If you search for C3D, which is the name of my company, um, you're going to look for the bathroom model for tile demo. And let's go ahead and open that up. All right, let's say um, goodbye to Susan. Thanks for dropping by. And go ahead and right click on this component and explode it. So let's see what we have here. We've got a tiny little bathroom and we've got some tiles floating around. So first of all, we're just gonna look at tiling this wall back here. So um, how do we get there? Um, we're going to use the section plane to cut away, which is a great tool for getting into small spaces. So if you click on the section plane, and you'll see as you move it around that it's going to snap to whichever plane um, it's closest to. So we want it to snap to the front plane. We're going to click there. Um, when I do, you're going to see an old section plane that I already made, but let's work on this new section plane. Whichever one you click on is going to become blue, and that means it's your now your active section plane. And now it's just like an opponent that you can move like anything else. So I'm going to pick the Move tool, or hit M for Move, and I'm going to move it. And as I hit uh, my building, you see that it starts cutting through the building and making a section plane. Then when I've got it where everything else is out of the way, so I can easily see this back wall, if I right-click, I can go to something called Align View, which is going to exactly line it up so I can see it. And this is great, except I don't want to see either my new section plane or my old one. So I'm going to go to View, and um, I want to see the section cut, but I don't want to see the section plane, so I'm going to uncheck Section Plane. And now we've got a great, easily accessible back shower wall that we can work on. All right, we've got some uh, various tiles floating around in space out here, so let's just take a look and see at what I have given you. So this first one, is just a 6 by 12 inch rectangle that I've pasted the picture of the tile on that I'm actually going to be using, but it doesn't have any thickness, it's just a flat, um, a flat rectangle. And then up here I've made a 6 by 12 inch rectangle and I've pulled it out a half inch, so now I've got um, a facsimile of a rectangle that we're going to use to lay out our tile to start with before we even think about beveling corners. And the reason that we do that is that um, if this corner square and this corner square, it's really easy to, once I make it a group, make sure when I move it over that they're all lined up. If this corner is beveled and this corner is beveled, it's really easy um, for the tiles to slightly overlap as your points are trying to like stick to each other. And then if you get lost somewhere all along down here at the bottom, we've got a completed tile that has beveled corners. Um, and this is kind of what we're going for in the end. So first we're going to start out though trying to figure out how many tiles um, can fit into our space. I'm sorry, I'm having a little trouble with my zoom. So um, again, if you didn't do it along with me, go ahead and get rid of this one and triple click on this tile with the depth, and then we're going to right click and we're going to make it a component. It's going to bring up this little information box. Let's call our component tile. And uh, there's some more um, complex things, but we're just going to leave that for now and we're going to say create a tile component. And yes, we do want to replace it. So now that we have our tile component, um, once we have our whole thing laid out, we can go back to our original rectangle and we can add our material detail to it, we can bevel the corners, and all of them will bevel at the same time. So um, it will be a great time saver. So let's go ahead and let's really be specific about where we want to move this tile to. If we move it from the back corner, the end point, that is the point that's going to want to stick to the back wall of the shower. And then when we move it over and we're on the face, when we zoom in, we're going to see that um, 
the component is automatically aligned to the back face because we moved it from this endpoint that we wanted to be attached to the face. So be really um, conscientious, conscientious, conscious <laughs> about where you're moving your components from. If you moved it from this point, you'll see that that point wants to stick to the face and our, our tile would be buried. So um, that's good true when you work with any component. If you have some furniture you want to stick to the floor, you want to move it from the bottom point that's going to be sticked in the floor, anything you want to stick to a wall, move it from the point that you want to stick to the wall. Okay, so let's start laying our tile pattern. So um, I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to take this tile, I'm going to move it from this corner and just to get in the corner I want to make sure I'm moving it up and down the blue axis so that way I know it's still attached to this wall and remember to lock it in that axis. I can just hold down shift and then I can't move it any other direction. It's going to move down until it hits the floor. It's going to say constrained on line intersect plane. Then we're going to move it to the left and I want to make sure that it stays in the red axis until again I'm going to hold down shift to lock it there and then it's going to hit the corner. Again it's going to say constrained on line intersect plane and now I know that tile is exactly in the corner. So I'm just going to copy this over a number of times and I'm just going to kind of eyeball it um, to see how many that we need. So I'm going to select the component. I'm going to move plus control to copy it. I'm going to slide endpoint to endpoint and then to make multiple copies I'm just going to um, push times 6 to start with. So times is the X that's next to the Z times 6 enter and you want to make sure you haven't hit any other um, keystrokes in between moving the first one or this won't work but if you haven't, voila, this is the, the cool thing you just get multiple copies all in the same row stacking across. So you can say okay well you've got six copies and that fills the space but it also goes into the wall in the space next door. So this is one of those things when you are making decisions as an interior designer, or interior architect, or a homeowner, it's like right now the wall's kind of cutting this off for you and that may be great enough to show your clients what you're going at. Um, if not, you can use the intersect with model um, tool that we're going to learn later um, to crop all these tiles off so they fit exactly. But you know what? This does it to show my client what I'm going for and I'm going for some speed and getting this job done so I'm going to leave it. Okay, so I want this tile laid out in like a running bond pattern. So these are going to be halfway um, to the point of the ones underneath. So the easiest way to do that is I'm going to select all of these, make them a group, and then just move them all up together and shift them over one. So the quickest way to do that is I'm just going to go from right to left. Uh, I'm going to select them all. Remember when you're selecting that everything back in space, even if it's behind what you're selecting, is also going to be selected. So I'm going to hold down shift, which means um, it either adds or subtracts to your selection. If you see next to my arrow, there's a little plus minus sign. So I'm going to click on that back wall to deselect it. And then if I rotate around, you can see that even the wall behind that got selected at the same time. So the same thing, I'm going to hold down shift and click on that. And now all that's selected is this row of tiles. I'm going to right click and this time I just want to make it a group. Now that it's a group, I can move and control, so copy. I'm going to move this up one, and then I can move from this endpoint to the left, and I'm looking for the midpoint in the component, which means the midpoint in the component below it that it's going to snap to, and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Okay, so I've got a great start to my pattern going here. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And uh, now I want this pattern to continue all the way up till I get above this window. So now I'm going to select both of the groups, put them together, make one more group, so I can copy this pattern easily and quickly up. So I'm going to take this group, I'm just going to start from this endpoint, and I'm going to move it, oops, move with control, so I copy it up till it snaps to the midpoint above it, I'm going to try, I don't know, let's try times five, enter. Oh, that's not quite enough. And you know what? If I haven't selected any other keys, I can just redo it. Let's say times seven, and that looks uh, like we've got the wall covered. Of course, we've covered the window, but we're going to talk about that later. 
Okay, so that's the end of part one. In part two of this series, we're going to learn how to make our rectangle look much more like a lovely tile. And then in part three, we're going to figure out how we're going to deal with this window. What's the easiest way to quickly trim all these tiles um, without it being an incredibly monotonous one by one period to, uh, to get our window opening. In the meantime, again, I'm Diane Dietrich of C3D. Here's my website if you want to check out more information about classes or what I can do for your business.